Theme 11. Paths to Modernization East India at the beginning of the 19th century was dominated by China. The Qing dynasty, heir to a long tradition, seemed secure in its power, while Japan, a small island country, seemed to be locked in isolation. Yet within a few decades, China was thrown into turmoil, unable to face the colonial challenge. The imperial government lost political control, was unable to reform effectively, and the country was convulsed by civil war. Japan, on the other hand, was successful in building a modern nation-state, creating an industrial economy, and even establishing a colonial empire by incorporating Taiwan, 1895 and Korea, 1910. It defeated China, the land that had been the source of its culture and ideals, in 1894 and Russia, a European power, in 1905. The Chinese reacted slowly and faced immense, immense difficulties as they sought to redefine their traditions to cope with the modern world and to rebuild their national strength and become free from Western and Japanese control. They found that they could achieve both objectives of removing inequalities and of rebuilding their country through revolution. The Chinese Communist Party emerged victorious from civil war in 1949. However, by the end of the 1970s, Chinese leaders felt that ideological system was retarding economic growth and development. This led to wide-ranging reforms of the economy that brought back capitalism and the free market even as the Communist Party retained political control. Japan became an advanced industrial nation, but its strive for empire led to war and defeat at the hands of Anglo-American forces. The US occupation marked the beginning of a more democratic political system and Japan rebuilt its economy to emerge by the 1970s as a major economic power. The Japanese path to modernization was built on capitalist principles and took place within a world dominated by Western colonialism. Japanese expansion was justified by the call to resist Western domination and liberate Asia. The rapid development underline the strength of tradition in Japanese institutions and society, their ability to learn and the strength of nationalism. China and Japan have had a long tradition of historical writings as history was an important guide to the rulers. The past provided the standards by which they would be judged and the rulers established official departments to maintain records and write dynastic histories. Simi Simi Sima Kiand, 145 to 90 BCE, is considered the greatest historian of early China. In Japan, Chinese cultural influence led to history being given a similar importance. One of the earliest acts of the Meiji government was to establish, in 1869, a bureau to collect records and write, as it were, a victor's version of the Meiji Restoration. There was great development for the written and the literary ability was highly valued. This has meant that a wide range of written materials, official histories, scholarly writings, popular literature, religious tracts are available. Printing and publishing were important industries in the pre-modern period and it is possible, for instance, to trace the distribution of a book in 18th century China or Japan. Modern scholars have used these materials in new and different ways. Modern scholarship has built on the work of Chinese intellectuals such as Liang Qichao or Kume Kunitake, 1839-1931, one of the pioneers of modern history in Japan, as well as earlier writings by European travellers such as Italian Marco Polo, 1254 to 1324, in China from 1274 to 1290, the Jesuit priest Matteo Ricci in China and 
and Louis Freus in Japan, all of whom left rich accounts of these countries, it has also benefited from the writings of Christian missionaries in the 19th century whose work provides valuable material in our understanding of these countries. Scholarship in English from Joseph Needham Monumental Work on the History of Science in Chinese Civilization or George Sansom's on Japanese history and culture has grown and there is an immense body of sophisticated scholarship available to us today. In recent years, writings by Chinese and Japanese scholars have been translated into English, some of whom teach abroad and write in English, and in the case of Chinese scholars, since the 1980s, many have been working in Japan as well as write in Japanese. This has meant that we have scholarly writings from many parts of the globe that give us a richer and deeper picture of these countries. Naito Konan, 1866-1934 A leading Japanese scholar of China, Naito Konan's writings influenced scholars worldwide. Using the new tools of Western historiography, Naito built on a long tradition of studying China as well as bringing his experience as a journalist there. He helped establish the Department of Oriental Studies in Kyoto University in 1907. In Shanaron, on China 1914, he argued that Republican government offered the Chinese a way to end aristocratic control and centralized power that had existed since the Song dynasty, a way to revitalize local society where reform must begin. He saw in Chinese history strengths that would make it modern and democratic. Japan, he thought, had an important role to play in China, but he underestimated the power of Chinese nationalism. Introduction China and Japan present a marked physical contrast. China is a vast continental country that spans many climatic zones. The core is dominated by three major river systems, the Yellow River, the Yangtze River, and the Pearl River. A large part of the country is mountainous. The dominant ethnic group are the Han, and the major language is Chinese, Putonghua. But there are many other nationalities such as Uyghur, Hui, Manchu and Tibetan. And aside from dialects, such Cantonese and Shanghainese, Wu, there are other minority languages spoken as well. Chinese food reflects their re regional diversity with at least four distinct types. The best known is Southern or Cantonese cuisine, as most overseas Chinese come from the Canton area, which includes dim sum, literally touch your heart, an assortment of pastries and dumplings. In the north, wheat is the stable food, while in Sichuan, spices brought by Buddhist monks in the ancient period, along the Silk Road and Chile's by Portuguese traders in the 15th century, have created a fiery cuisine. In eastern China, both rice and wheat are eaten. Japan, by contrast, is a string of islands, the four largest being Honsu, Yushu, Shikoku, and Hokkaido. The Okinawan chain is the southernmost, about the same latitude as the Bahamas. More than 50% of the land area of the main islands is mountainous and Japan is situated in a very active earthquake zone. These geographical conditions have influenced architecture. The population is largely Japanese, but there are a small Ainu minority and Koreans who were forcibly brought as labor when Korea was a Japanese colony. Japan lacks a tradition of animal re rearing. Rice is the staple crop and fish the major source of protein. Raw fish, sashimi or sushi, has now become a widely popular dish around the world as it is considered very healthy. Japan The political system An emperor had ruled Japan from Kyoto. Out by the 12th century, the imperial court lost power to shotguns, who in theory ruled in the name of the emperor. From 1603 to 1867, Members of Tokugawa family held the position of shogun. The country was divided into over 250 domains under the rule 
of lords called daimyo. The shogun exercised power over the dominal lords, ordering them to stay at the capital Edo, modern Tokyo, for long periods so that they would not pose a threat. He also controlled the major cities and mines. The samurai, the warrior class with the ruling elite and served the shoguns and the daimyo. In the late 16th century, three changes laid the pattern for future development. One, the peasantry was disarmed and only the samurai could carry swords. This ensured peace and order, ending the frequent wars of the previous century. Two, the daimyo were ordered to live in the capitals of their domains, each with a large degree of degree of autonomy. Third, land surveys identified owners and taxpayers and graded land productivity to ensure a stable revenue base. The daimyo's capitals became larger so that by the mid-17th century, Japan not only had the most populated city in the world, Edo, but also two other large cities, Osaka and Kyoto. In at least half a dozen castle towns, with populations of over 50,000. By contrast, most European countries of the time had only one large city. This led to the growth of commercial economy and created financial and credit systems. A person's merit began to be more valued than his status. A vibrant culture blossomed into the towns, where the fast-growing class of merchants patronized theatre and the arts. As people enjoyed reading, it became possible for gifted reader writers to earn a living solely by writing. In Edu, people could rent a book for the price of a bowl of noodles. This shows how popular reading had become and gives a glimpse into scale of printing. Japan was considered rich because it imported luxury goods like silk from China and textiles from India. Paying for these imports with gold and silver strained the economy and led Tokugawa to put restrictions on the export of precious metals. They also took steps to develop the silk industry in Nishijin in Kyoto so as to reduce imports. The silk from Nishijin came to be known as the best in the world. Other developments such as the increased use of money and the creation of a stock market in rice show that the economy was developing in new ways. Social and intellectual changes, such as the study of ancient Japanese literature, led people to question the degree of Chinese influence and to argue that the essence of being Japanese could be found long before the contact with China. In such clearly early classics as Tale of the Genji and in Myths of Origin that said that the islands were created by the gods and that the emperor was a descendant of the sun goddess. Tale of the Genji, a, fictional, a fictionalized diary of a Heian court written by Murasaki Shikibu, the Tale of the Genji became the central work of fiction in Japanese literature. That period saw the emergence of many women writers like Murasaki, who wrote in the Japanese script, while men wrote in the Chinese script, used for education and government. The novel depicts the romantic life of Prince Genji, and is a striking picture of the aristocratic atmosphere of the Heian court. It shows the independence that women had in choosing their husbands and living their lives. The Meiji Restoration Internal discontent coincided with demands for trade and diplomatic relations. In 1853, the USA sent Commodore Matthew Perry, 1794-1858, to, to Japan to depend that the government signed a treaty that would permit trade and open diplomatic relations, which it did the following year. Japan lay on the route to China, which the USA saw a major market. Also, their whaling ships in the Pacific needed a place to refuel. At that time, there was only one Western country that traded with Japan, Holland. Perry's arrival had an important effect on Japanese politics. The emperor, who till then had little political power now re-emerged as an important figure. In 1868, a movement forcibly removed the shogun from power and brought the emperor to Edo. 
This was made the capital and renamed Tokyo, which meant the Eastern Capital. Officials and the people were aware that some European countries were building colonial empires in India and elsewhere. News of China being defeated by the British was flowing in and this was even depicted in popular plays so that there was a real fear that Japan might be made of a colony. Many scholars and leaders wanted to learn from the new ideas in Europe rather than ignore them as the Chinese were doing. Others sought to exclude the Europeans even while being ready to adopt the new technologies they offered. Some argued for a gradual and limited opening in the outer world. The government launched a policy with the slogan Fo Koku Kyohei, Rich Country, Strong Army. They realized that they needed to develop the economy and build a strong army, otherwise they would face the prospect of being subjugated like India. To do this, they needed to create a sense of nationhood among the people and to transform subjects into citizens. At the same time, the new government also worked to rebuild what they call as emperor system. Japanese scholars use this term as the emperor was part of a system along with bureaucracy and the military and exercise power. Officials were sent to study the European monarchies on which they planned to model their own. The emperor would be treated with reverence as he was considered a direct descendant of the sun goddess, but he was also shown as the leader of westernization. His birthday became a national holiday. He wore western-style military uniforms and edicts were issued in his name to set up modern institutions. The imperial rescript on education of 1890 urged people to pursue learning, advance public good and promote common interests. A new school system began to be built from the 1870s Schooling was compulsory for both boys and girls and by 1910 almost universal. Tuition fees were minimal. The curriculum has been based on Western models but in the 1870s, while emphasizing modern ideas, stress was placed on loyalty and the study of Japanese history. The Ministry of Education exercised control over the curriculum and in the selection of textbook as well as in teachers' training. What was called moral culture had to be taught, and texts urged children to revere their parents, be loyal to the nation, and become good citizens. The Japanese had borrowed their written script from the Chinese in the 6th century. However, their language is very different from Chinese. They developed two phonetic alphabets, hiragana and katakana. Hiragana is considered feminine because it was used by many women writers in the Heian period such as Murasaki. It is written using a mixture of Chinese characters and phonetics, so that the main part of the word is written with a character. For instance, in going go would be written with a character and ing in phonetics. The existence of a phonetics library meant that knowledge spread from the elites to the wider society relatively quickly. In 1880s, it was suggested that Japanese develop a completely phonetic script or adopt a European language. Neither was done. To integrate the nation, the Meiji government imposed a new administrative structure by altering old village and domain boundaries. The administrative unit had to have revenue adequate to maintain local schools and health facilities as well as serve as recruitment centre for the military. All young men over 20 had to do a period of military service. A modern military force was developed. A legal system was set up to regulate the formulation of political groups, control the holding of meetings and impose strict censorship. In all these measures, the government had to face opposition. The military and the bureaucracy were put under direct command of the emperor. This meant that even after a constitution was enacted, these two groups remained outside the control of the government. In all these measures, the government faced opposition. The tension between these different ideals represented by a democratic 
constitution and a modern army was to have far-reaching consequences. The army pressed for a vigorous foreign policy to acquire more territory. This led to wars with China and Russia, in both of which Japan was the victor. Popular demand for greater democracy was often in the opposition to the government's aggressive policies. Japan developed economically and acquired a colonial empire that suppressed the spread of democracy at home and put it in collision with the people it colonized. Modernizing the economy Another important part of the Meiji reforms was the modernizing of the economy. Funds were raised by levying on agricultural tax, Japan's first railway line between Tokyo and the port of Yokohama was built in 1870-72. to 72. Textile machinery was imported from Europe and foreign technicians were employed to train workers as well as to teach in universities and schools and Japanese students were sent abroad. In 1872, modern banking institutions were launched. Companies like Mitu, Bishi and Sumi Tomo were helped through subsidies and tax benefits to become major shipbuilders so that Japanese trade was from now on carried in Japanese ships. Zaibatsu, large business organizations controlled by individuals families, dominated the economy till after the Second World War. The population, 35 million in 1872, increased to 55 million in 1920. To reduce population pressure, the government actively encouraged migration first to the northern island of Hokkaido, which had been a largely autonomous area where the indigenous people called the Ainu lived, and then to Hawaii and Brazil, as well as to the growing colonial empire of Japan. But in Japan, there was a shift to towns as industry developed. By 1925, 21% of the population lived in cities. By 1935, this figure had gone up to 32%, 22.5 million. Industrial workers. The number of people in manufacturing increased from 700,000 in 1870 to 4 million in 1913. Most of them worked in unit employing less than five people and using neither machinery nor electric power. Over half of those employed in modern factories were women, and it was women who organized the first modern strike in 1886. After 1900, the number of men began to increase, but only in the 1930s did male workers begin to outnumber women. The size of factories also began to increase. Factories employing more than a 100 workers, just over thousand in 1909 jumped to over 2000 by 1920 and 4000 by the 1930s yet even in the 1940 there were over 550000 workshops that employed less than 5 employees this sustained the family centered ideology just as nationalism was sustained by a strong patriarchal system under the emperor who was like a family patriarch the rapid and unregulated growth of industry and the demand for natural resources such as timber led to environmental destruction. Tanaka Shozo, elected to the first House of Representatives, launched the first agitation against industrial pollution in 1897 with 800 villagers in a mass protest forcing the government to take action. Aggressive Nationalism the Meiji constitution was based on a restricted franchise and created a diet. The Japanese used the German word for parliament because of the influence of German legal ideas with limited powers. The leaders who brought about the imperial restoration continued to exercise power and even establish political parties. Between 1918 and 1931, popularly elected Prime Ministers formed cabinets. Thereafter, they lost power to National Unity Cabinets. Lost Thereafter, they lost power to National 
unity cabinets from across party lines. The emperor was the commander of the forces and from 1890 this was interrupted to mean that the army and the navy had independent control. In 1899, the Prime Minister ordered that only serving generals and admirals could become Prime Ministers, could become Ministers. This strengthening of the military together with the expansion of Japan's colonial empire was connected with the fear that Japan was at the mercy of Western powers. This fear was used to silence opposition to military expansion and to higher taxes to fund the armed forces. Westernization and tradition. Successive generations of J Japanese had different views on Japan's relations with other countries. To some, the USA and the Western European countries were at the highest point of civilization to which Japan aspired. Fukuzawa Yukichi, a leading Meiji intellectual, expressed this by saying that Japan must expel Asia. He meant that Japan must shed its Asian characteristics and become part of the West. Fukuzawa Yuki Chi, 1835-1901 Born in an impoverished samurai family, he studied in Nagasaki and Osaka learning Dutch and Western sciences and later English. In 1860, he went as a translator for the first Japanese embassy to the USA. This provided material for a book on the West written not in the classical but in the spoken style that became extremely popular. He established a school that is today the Keio University. He was one of the core members of Meiro Kusha, a society to promote Western learning. In the encouragement, in the encouragement to learning, Gakumon no Susume, 1872-76, he was very critical of Japanese knowledge. All that Japan has to be proud of is its scenery. He advocated that not just modern factories and institutions, but the cultural essence of the West, the spirit of civilization. With this spirit, it would be possible to build a new citizen. His, new, his principle was, heaven did not create men after men, nor set men below men. The next generation questioned this total acceptance of Western ideas and urged national pride be built on indigenous values. The philosopher Miyake Setsure, 1860-1945, argued that each nation must develop its special talents in the interests of world civilization. To devote oneself to one's country is to devote oneself to the world. By contrast, many intellectuals were attracted to Western liberalism and wanted a Japan based not on the military but on democracy. Yu Uyeki Imori, 1857 to 1892, a leader of the popular rights movement, was demanding constitutional government and admired the French Revolution's doctrine of the natural rights of man and of popular sovereignty, and spoke of a liberal education that would develop. Each individual, freedom is more precious than order. Others even advocated voting rights for women. This pressure led the government to announce a constitution. Daily life. Japan's transformation into modern society can be seen also in changes in the everyday life. The patriarchal household system comprises many generations living together under the control of the head of the house. But as more people became affluent, new ideas of the family is spread. The new home, homo, as the Japanese say using the English word, was that of the nuclear family, where husband and wife live as breadwinner and homemaker. This new concept of domesticity in turn generated demands for new types of domestic goods, new types of family entertainments, and new forms of housing. In the 1920s, construction companies made cheap housing available for a down payment of 200 yen and a monthly installment of 12 yen for 10 years. This at a time when the salary of a bank employee, a person with higher education, was 40 yen per month. Car Club 
moga an abbreviation for modern girl it represented the coming together in the 20th century of ideas of gender equality a cosmopolitan culture and a developed economy the new middle class families enjoyed new forms of travel and entertainment transport in cities improved with electric trams public parks were opened from 1878 and department stores began to be built in tokyo the ginza became a fashionable area for ginbura a word combining ginza and burbura walking aimlessly the first radio stations opened in 1925 matsui sumako an actress became a national star with her portrayal of nora in norwegian writer ibsen adol's house movies began to be made in 1899 and soon there were a dozen companies making hundreds of films this period was one of great vitality and questioning of traditional norms of social and political behavior overcoming modernity state centered nationalism found full expression in the 1930s and 1940s as japan launched wars to extend its empire in china and other parts of asia a war that merged into second world war after japan attacked the usa at pearl harbor this period saw greater controls on society the repression and imprisonment of dissidents as well as the formation of patriotic societies many of them women's organization to support the war an influential symposium on overcoming modernity in 1943 debated the dilemma facing japan of how to combat the west while being modern a musician moro saburo posed the question of how to rescue music from the art of sensory stimulation and restore it to an art of the spirit he was not rejecting western music but trying to find a way that went beyond merely rewriting or playing japanese music on western instruments the philosopher nishi tani keiji defined modern as the unity of three streams of western thought the renaissance the protestant reformation and the rise of natural sciences he argued that japan's moral energy a term taken from the german philosopher ranke had helped it to escape colonization and that it was its duty to establish a new world order a greater east asia for this a new vision that would integrate science and religion was necessary after defeat re-emerging as a global economic power japan's attempt to carve out a colonial empire ended with its defeat by the allied forces it has been argued that nuclear bombs were dropped on hiroshima and nagasaki to shorten the war but others think the immense redistribution and suffering it caused was necessary unnecessary under the us led occupation 1945 to 47 japan was demilitarized and a new constitution introduced this had article 9 the so called no war clause that renounces the use of war as an instrument of state policy agrarian reforms the the reestablishment of trade unions and an attempt to dismantle the zai batsu or large monopoly houses that dominated the japanese economy were also carried out political parties were revived and the first post war elections held in 1946 where women voted for the first time the rapid rebuilding of the japanese economy after its shattering defeat was called a post war miracle but it was more than that it was firmly rooted in its long history the constitution was democratized only now but the japanese had a historic tradition of popular struggles and intellectual engagement with how to broaden political participation the social cohesion of the pre-war years was strengthened allowing for a close working of the government bureaucracy and industry us support as well as demand 
created by the Korean and Vietnamese wars, also helped the Japanese economy. The 1964 Olympics, held in Tokyo, marked a symbolic coming of age. In much the same way, the network of high-speed Shinkansen, or bullet trains, started in 1964, which ran at 200 miles per hour. Now it is 300 miles per hour have come to represent the ability of the Japanese to use advanced technologies to produce better and cheaper goods. The 1960s saw the growth of civil society movements and industrialization has been pushed with utter disregard to its effect on health and the environment. Cadmium poisoning, which led to a painful disease, was an early indicator followed by mercury poisoning in Minamata, in the 1960s and problems caused by the pollution in the early 1970s. Grassroots pressure groups began to demand recognition of these problems as well as compensation for the victims. Government action and a well legal regulations helped to, to improve conditions. From the mid-1980s, there had been an increasing decline in interest in environmental issues as Japan enacted some of the strictest environmental controls in the world. Today, as a developed country, it faces the challenge of using political and technological capabilities to maintain its position as a leading world power.